Hello everyone. I'm going to ramble for a minute because I know there's three other people who I do know who are having a week. Uh, so I will just stall casually. Uh, and then you've all seen this starting slide. So I can probably move on to the next one and they have to catch up. We'll, we'll, we'll get the gist. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about HTML5, not for long, but a little bit. And then we're going to talk about um, mobile and how, what is mobile, how do we get mobile, and give you a bit of a leg up on some of the stuff that we did to make mobile websites. What this will not be is an in-depth crash course on every possible nuance that there is to mobile. It's still a very new uh, area and uh, the technology is moving pretty swift and the techniques are moving pretty swift. All I really want to do is give you a good primer so you can get out there, uh, do some resources where you can go and, um, and just get a leg up so you can just crack on yourselves. Uh, we're still learning. We've done a couple of mobile sites and really enjoyed doing them. Everyone's been a joy because you get to really see some really quick um, advancements in what you're doing and, and to see a new phone on, on your tech team is actually quite, uh, quite a nice feeling. Um, so like I said, it's just going to be a nice leg up to get you going. Right, two who I was waiting for have turned up. Enough stalling. We shall commence. Um, so, uh, here's what we're roughly going to rattle through. Uh, you can meet me. I mean, I'm just a mouthy guy at the front, so I'll explain roughly who I am. Uh, HTML in a nutshell, blah, 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 blah. I pretty much said all that in my ramble. So we'll move on. Uh, I'm Pete. Uh, I uh, own and started a little company up north uh, called Offroad Code. We specialize in, well, I'd say, medium sized websites. Uh, we don't do the little five page demo stuff, we like to work on the big stuff. Uh, mainly because I just love fixing problems, and I, I can't fix problems on the site, so I like, I like sites with a bit of bite, because um, uh, that's just how my brain works, I like, I like working on things. Um, I've been in a bracket for three odd years, and uh, I've produced uh, a, a number of packages, I say I, it's actually we, there's uh, three of us in the company, and uh, all of us chip in to try and produce the ones you do. Uh, probably the most famous ones are XL Touch, which is used by about four people in the world, but those people love it. Uh, which I'm very grateful for. And uh, the other one uh, is Doctype Mixins, which you might have heard from. Um, it's changed the way that some people build um, Doctypes, which I'm very grateful for. Uh, it was nice to build it, and uh, thank you very much for the feedback. Uh, and a new one, um, which we'll cover today, is called Responsive Images, uh, which uses uh, Mr. Robar's fabulous image gen, which, uh, according to Colbert earlier, uh, everyone is aware of what image gen is, but uh, I'll cover it if need be. Um, so, HTML5 is HTML gen but not as we know it. That tends to be everyone's opinion of HTML5. When it first came out, everyone thought, God, not another one. Here we go. I've only just got to grip before, even though it's been out for seven years, and uh, I thought I just about had cracked it, and now you've got to change everything. Damn you. Um, but that's not actually the case. Don't believe the naysayers. Uh, HTML5 is nothing special. All it is is HTML just tightened up a bit. Uh, so a lot of the bits that we've been doing anyway, uh, day to day, they just corrected a few bits, some bits that were wrong, and some stuff that they didn't even know about when they first originally came up with the spec. They've just tidied it up uh, and made it a little bit better. Like I say, the HTML5 part of this is going to be real short. Um, there's plenty of resources. I'm just going to hopefully pop some bubbles, because I know when I've talked to a couple of people, and they've, they've seen what we've done HTML5, it's like some sort of magic voodoo when they see some of the new tags. They're like, oh, what's all that about? I've never seen that. That looks too scary. I'm not going to go anywhere near it. Please don't, it's just HTML, it's all it is. Just uh, don't be scared of it, get in there, knock his teeth out. You know it, you love it, it's just slightly tweaked. So, um, let's do it with some of the new, the new elements they've got in. There's about 20 odd new elements, or 20 elements that have, that have tweaked. Um, basically, they, the, the guys who come up at HTML5 have been very pragmatic and very clever. They've gone through all the big sites and they were trying to find out what is everyone doing? What, what are the common patterns that everyone are after? We add divs which uh, obviously have no actual meaning, they're just there purely to help uh, organize our code and our, our markup. And they started seeing that there were some definite patterns. Uh, if you built anything with divs, if you're still building with tables by the way, door's there, just feel free to go now, that's fine. Uh, if you've moved up to divs, that's great. Um, we all did, we've, we've got a div with an idea of header, uh, by the way these IDs could be anything you like, they're just uh, just examples of what you might have. So you normally have a header, header div, and then you have a sidebar div, you've got the main content, you know, you might have your footer, etc., etc. And that wonderful wrapper that we always put around everything as well, just to give us a nice bit of uh, CSS goodness. Uh, well, they decided to just merge all them in, so we don't do this go governs anymore. We now have the header, we have a nav tag, uh, we have a section tag, and we have the side, for instance. Side's uh, a lovely one, we quite like the sides, we use those quite a lot. If it's not the main content, it's probably going to be in the side. Um, there are some lovely rules on when to use these. Uh, a lot of people get really hung up 
on the semanticness of uh, uh, HTML. These tags are meant to make that semantics much easier, but please don't don't chew yourself up about that. Ah, should be this, should be that. Just get it written, it'll be fine. If, it's, uh, if it makes sense to you, it will make sense to the browser, it will make sense to most people. Don't chew yourself up, we'll get into those religious semantic wars that happen. Um, point on resources, by the way, we've got a slide at the end uh, with everything on. I know some people take pictures with their iPhones and things. Uh, big slide with every link on, so just wait till the end, you don't have to uh, ask me to take shots or anything. I've even got a QR code, so pushing the boundaries of technology. Um, if you really want to push um, the HTML5 stuff, which you should be doing, I um, highly, highly recommend HTML5 Doctor if you've not checked it out yet. Uh, you can easily have a good look at lunchtime, and uh, if it's one of those great sites, you can just keep dipping into and find some great, great resources. Uh, James, who's at the front, he's, uh, he's my partner in crime. Uh, he's more the front end guy, he does a lot more of the markup for the CSS than me. Uh, I tend to do the back end stuff. Uh, he said you have to put this slide in because it's the one that he's got on his wall and he lives and lives and breathes by it. If you're in doubt about the uh, semantic stuff I was talking about, what should you do, which tag should you use, uh, this very badly rendered uh, slide uh, gives you a nice little snapshot of where to go. Follow the flowchart, you get the best idea of which tag you should be using. Um, it's really good, he really does use it every day, and as a result, I now look over his shoulder and steal it as well, because he's quite, quite a handy one now. Again, that will be at the end of the end of the slide if you want the link for that. So, um, some of the other stuff HTML5 is cleared up. Uh, everyone heard of Jeffrey Zeldman and XHTML and all the goodness that came with it. Uh, one of the leftovers that was that was the infamous closing tag slash. Uh, do you or do you not put closing, closing uh, slash on? If you were trying to do XML and HTML well, um, it had to validate, it had to be wonderful, and, and this damn slash had to be everywhere. Uh, then you have the wonderful quirk of, well, it had to be a space slash, because a certain version of IE apparently didn't like rendering it, and on we went. We got ourselves into a bit of, uh, a bit of, a bit of issues. Um, the trouble is, those who bothered to actually read about all that stuff knew it and did it well, and then those who just come on behind and kind of see it, and they don't really know what they're doing, start putting closing slashes everywhere, or not putting closing slashes everywhere and you get in terrible trouble with inconsistencies. So one of the things HTML5 want to do is mop all that mess up um, and just get rid of it completely. So they said, we don't care if you put a closing class on or not. It'll, it'll just do it, it'll look after it. All we ask is you're consistent. So if you're used, like me, I always do the closing slash, or uh, meta tags, link tags, etc. If, you, if you're used to it, just continue doing it, it's fine. Just pick one, whichever you're happy with, it'll do. HTML5 really doesn't care. Um, then you've got doc type hell. I was going to give a little bit of history about doc types, but then I thought it was really dull and we shouldn't do any more, so we'll skip over. Um, in short, uh, this is the only doc type you need to do HTML5. You whack that at the top of your document, it will work. Without it, your browser will go into quirks mode, or will certainly have a go of going into quirks mode, which is the default. My god, what knows this garbage? I'll try my best to render it mode. Um, this one will work. The reason it's still needed. Is this is the shortest version they could get that all browsers will still recognize. Um, and it deals with various parsing quirks and all sorts of weirdness. So if it's browser safe, it'll work across the board. Uh, then we've got some helping hands. Um, if you do HTML5, there are a number of tools you can use. Um, can I ask that no one say, what if JavaScript's not enabled? Uh, we'll just gloss over that one <laughs> if we can. 99% um, of the web has JavaScript, and I'm a big fan of just saying, it's not dealing with that these days. Uh, screen readers and all that arguments, they're still dealing with JavaScript now, they've come on leaps and bounds. We're not still talking about JAWS version 3 anymore from 20 years ago when all their books came out. It, it's, uh, they're, going, they're going head on, so uh, let's assume the JavaScript's just, just safe. Modernizer, it's uh, a wonderful guy called Paul Irish, who if you haven't heard of, please Google him, uh, find him, uh, keep an eye on him. He's an absolutely wonderful guy, working very hard to get the HTML5 stuff really climbing ahead. He came up with this thing called Modernizer, which does a lot of, a lot of good stuff. Um, specifically, adds a load of classes to your HTML tag, which will then allow you in your CSS and your JavaScript to find out what your browser is capable of. So we no longer have to do browser sniffing or any of that rubbish anymore. You can literally say, does this class belong on the HTML tag? If it does, then I know it can implement whatever it is. Uh, WebSockets, for instance, you can use a CSS class or a, a JavaScript query selected to find out whether your browser supports WebSockets by using what modernizer you inject it. Makes it nice and standard, nice and simple. Always include it, regardless. It's just a wonderful little tiny piece of kit. Um, the final one is it patches IE 6 and 7. Uh, unfortunately, we still have to look after those things. And uh, IE doesn't render the new tags. It doesn't recognize them. Um, so none of your styles will be applied to the new header 
navigation section to sides, etc. So what he does is a little twerk, quirk where it goes through the DOM, uh, boops each element of the DOM and says, go on, you don't get rendered. Uh, and when he does that, I even go, oh, right, sorry, I'll reapply the style. Uh, so one of those little hacks that he has to do. Uh, and again, to protect IE, uh, again, uh, there's another one called Selector RRIRIs, which I don't say out loud very often, you may gather. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, but uh, you get the gist. That'll do pseudo classes, which are uh, allow you to do things like first child, last child, uh, where you can apply classes in CSS. And the final one is one called Respond.js. This gives you uh, min max width que media queries. Uh, I'll come on to media queries in a little bit. Um, but again, it's another, it's another bit of polyfill for, for IE. Uh, final tip if you do use any IE only stuff, uh, please continue to use conditional style sheet, uh, conditional includes, so that only IE has to download it, the rest of your browser can, can crack on. I would assume you guys are all aware of that, what conditional stuff is, and uh, if not, please Google. So, um, what else comes in? Uh, HTML5 has unfortunately become a bit of an umbrella for just pouring in any new technology that's come up in the last two years ago. It's HTML5. Uh, it's not really true. Uh, HTML5 itself is just a markup. Uh, there's then a whole raft of other goodies that come with it. And CSS3 is the other one that I'll just briefly uh, glaze over. There are loads of new tools in CSS3. It does really good stuff. It has fantastic support as well. Every day that support is getting better. You know we're on Chrome 15 now or whatever? Well, when uh, last the start of the year, I think I installed Chrome 9. So we've had six odd iterations since. Each one of those has got more and more and more CSS3 support in. Uh, Firefox is now 99, I think, or whatever speed is going these days. Uh, same sort of thing. Every time it's getting more and more CSS stuff in. Uh, IE9, uh, which the Beeves, if you did, will be uh, talking about later on, uh, that's got some support, and 10 is promised to be for the support. So that's not quite as, as quick uh, a turnaround, but we do get there. Um, with CSS3, you can do all sorts of nice, snazzy stuff. You probably see the demos. Uh, I'm going to err on the side of caution and say, uh, take it easy. Don't go too crazy with the, the transitions and everything. They do add weight and do add browser intensity and CPU usage and everything. Um, some of it's a lot of just mirror, mirror smoke and mirrors and glam stuff. But uh, if, you, if you've got any need for it, use it. But don't put curvy corners and drop shadows on everything. Well, everything looks the same. <laughs> So don't go silly. Uh, I'm going to keep it simple. So um, just to reiterate on that, with the with the CSS effects you can do, uh, you've got this idea of browser uh, or vendor specific prefixes, um, which basically means if uh, if a new feature hasn't been supported yet 100%, you can put a prefix in it so that only that browser will pay attention to it. Anything that doesn't understand that prefix, uh, which for your CSS classes, will just ignore it. So it's a broken um, entry as far as it's concerned, we'll skip over it. There is an example of someone who's done, I can't even remember what the effect is, but he's managed to do some crazy ass effect that he's very, very pleased with, uh, with about 200 lines of CSS. That effect itself isn't worth 200 lines of CSS. It's a gazillion million uh, browser quirks and all sorts of, of, of goodness. It's just not worth it. Don't bother doing that. That's, that's just bloke. Throw that away. It shouldn't have been done that way in the first place. Move on. Keep it nice and smooth and simple, and you'll avoid a lot of trouble. Uh, and media queries are for the win, uh, which again, I'm going to go on to. So, what the hell are media queries? I've talked about them twice now, uh, and I haven't actually explained to them. Uh, in short, it's a wonderful if statement that you can put in your CSS, uh, where you can say, if these, these conditions are met, then render me out these styles, inject these styles into the page. Um, and that gives you a lot of power, and we're going to need that power when we go to mobile. Uh, so I'm just going to give you a quick glance of uh, what media queries look like. And again, use some resources. So, uh, media queries are, he says, hoping this works. Da -da -da. This is what media query looks like. Uh, I've, got a, I've got the iPhone one here. <coughs> is that big enough? Everyone see at the back? So, um, again, when I said this HTML5 stuff has been thought up by some very clever people, they are very clever because of what they've done is really pragmatic. It, it's about all backwards compatible. The old stuff doesn't get broken. Uh, as an example, this is your media query. So this, if you think of this as an if statement, uh, this is going to live in, you can live in your style tag at the top, or you can live in a style sheet that you include external. As many of these as you like. Think of it as an if statement. Any CSS that's in the middle will get run if this matches. 
Um, it really is that simple. And the reason I said it's pragmatic and clever is any, uh, any browser that's reading this will read this as a selector. And it'll go, oh, don't like that. It's a badly rendered selector. And by the rules of CSS, I will rather throw it away and move on to the next one and try and find another one. So anything that doesn't, doesn't understand the queries just throws it away and carries on. Nothing's broken. Keep it in free. Or we're using up a couple of bytes to go down the wire. Um, and like I say, it acts like a giant niche thing. This one's going to work for iPhone landscape, so that will only run that code for iPhone landscape, obviously, which allows you to do some snazzy ass shit, uh, which we're about to show you now. So, with enough of these in, this site, by the way, is fabulous. It's got loads of different uh, snippets to get you used to stuff, so you can go look at uh, iPad portrait. Uh, notice it's saying match width has to be this many pixels, orientation. You can play with all sorts of things. I'm not aware of all the different options you can have for the if state, which is why I like this website. <laughs> you just sort of go and cheat uh, and cut and paste it. Um, so what kind of stuff does that allow you to do? Well, again, uh, we've got another site here which has some media queries on just to show you the kind of stuff you can play with. So this is uh, on my incredibly tiny machine. Um, this is the kind of stuff, stuff it does. I'll do that incredibly annoying thing for responsive web design people and then I resize my browser, which, uh, for the record, isn't responsive web design, it's just a handy way to test it. Uh, I'll come back to that in a minute. As we shrink stuff down, you go, yeah, 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 what about it? Whoa, boom, big change. That's where one of, one of your mirror queries just fired. It's got right, when you get down to this width, run these styles, uh, which allows everything to jump around, and everything to go a little bit nicer. So things will point out. This block here is jumped down here. Everything's now in line. Uh, and if I just go back a little bit, boom, there we go. We've got a right hand bar. Right hand bar disappeared. Uh, also, notice up in the top here, it's actually telling you roughly what the size is. Uh, that's uh, a nice CSS, um, not hack, but feature where he's actually injected some content in as part of his media query, so he knows which media query is actually running and when. Uh, and again, you can view the source on this one, actually have a look see how that's done. And if you go down a little bit smaller, bang, all the colors have gone again, and he's changed some sizes. And again, it's more media queries going, and I believe there's one more. There we go. So that's four different lots of media queries firing off, all based on the size of the browser, which makes, uh, which that's the power that we've been missing. That's, that's what's going to allow us to do mobile uh, by having those if statements. We've not had to do any uh, browser sniffing. We've not had to do anything on the server to work out, oh, it's an it's iPhone, or it's, uh, it's using Mozilla, but it's mi minus four, or any of that rubbish. Uh, we just send it down the wire, and the browser handles it for us by just running the CSS that we sent down, uh, the, the, told it to do anyway. So that's my two demos back to the action. Okay, so going mobile. Um, there are um, an awful lot of devices available now and uh, too many. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gone are the days of being able to design for a particular screen. Uh, I remember a couple of years ago we got really excited when the stats for one of the big sites we run finally showed that enough people now had a thousand by eight hundred uh, monitors and yes, we can finally go up from 800 to 600. Come on, white screen, and we could fit so much more stuff on. And we went silly and we spent three months just making everything a touch wider. And within two weeks, we got completely used to it, uh, like we do. And um, that, that was a joy because you kind of had the stats to tell you how, how big everything was going to be, roughly. And the guys who were still on 800 to 600, well, probably your granny, and she's not going to visit the site to watch anyway. Don't worry about it. But now, thanks to the wonder of iPhones, iPads, and everything else. Um, you, there's just too many devices. You can't, you can't make those distinctions anymore. Uh, the days of fixed sites have gone. We can't, it just can't work that way anymore. Um, so as a result, you've got to make your sites be a lot more responsive. Uh, they have to be able to render on any device. The same, same content has to be able to render on any device. Now a lot of clients go, it has to look exactly the same on every device. Pixel perfect. Uh, and again, that idea of it, we're trying to squash. And it's a hard sell for clients, but we don't always get it. Uh, but one of the best ways we found of doing it is showing them uh, a, a demo of the site to go, this is how it's going to look, and this is how it will work. Um, to do mobile properly, uh, well, there's two ways. You can build for every single device. So when a new one, new phone uh, comes out, write a media query for it. And it must be for a landscape iPhone doing this, and then the Nexus will do one for that, and then some Android app tablet uh, will do for that. You can get yourself in knots real quickly doing that. There's just too many devices coming out, and all you're coding for are devices that are out now. Uh, and your maintenance contract, if you have one, uh, probably won't allow you to look at it because the devices will come up in two months' time after you launch, so that you can go back and again. 
So the only way around it is to be flexible and be advice agnostic, which is a really big word. I apologise to our European friends if that one doesn't translate too well. Uh, it doesn't mean you can't, you can't rely on any device. Your, your stuff just has to work full stop. Uh, one of the ways that, to get around that, because there are so many devices, you have to make some choices, is you can come up with this idea of breakpoints. Um, and this chart shows up real nicely just how many there are. It's really cluttered on purpose. Ignore all of them except these three. They're your big ones. So what you do is you have a breakpoint here. Is it for pixels? So at a thousand pixels wide, that's your desktop. That's where you meet your query for that one's going to render everything normal. That's where you get your right hand bar. That's where you get nice big images. Everything renders just as normal. Again, back to uh, 1,000 by 800. Whoopee, we go really wide. That's where that section is. Then you've got another cutoff point here at 720. And you put another media query in there. So, right, when we get down to this size, we're going to jiggle stuff around a little bit more. This is where we're talking iPads, whether, whether on landscape or uh, portrait. Uh, that's where that media query is going to kick in. And then finally, you've got one more down here, about 320. Uh, you can also do it at 480, which is iPhone landscape. Um, so either of those two are okay because everything should be scaling and, and, and growing and shrinking. Um, the other ones are left in purely to show how messy this can get. <laughs> so like I said, keep it simple, stupid. Three major break points, you can cover just about all devices and render stuff out nicely. Now the other trouble with mobile is people are using them all over the place. Uh, this one's funny because it's true. Um, <laughs> I do most of my tweeting on the top. So sorry about that. That's confession. Um, people are using their phones all over the place, and I mean on buses and all sorts. So the other thing we have to think about when we're doing mobile is making as lightweight as we can. And the amount of info that we send down the wire has to be as, as minimal as possible. If this person sat on the bus, they haven't got time to be downloading a gazillion of images and everything else. They can't download all the stuff that we send down potentially on a desktop. So we have to do a little bit of magic to try and keep that. That, that said, uh, there's also the argument for if someone is in London and they're trying to go to a restaurant and they're in a hurry and they're trying to go to the website, should I send them uh, our address, our opening hours, uh, a link to a Google Map as the, uh, just our page? Should, should I say, oh, you're on a mobile device, you probably want this because you're in a rush to go to our restaurant? Or should I send them the actual website? Uh, I'm a big fan of saying send them the website. You don't know the context that they're actually browsing. They might be on their settee trying to pull. And you just annoyed them by going, I'm assuming you're on a London street and in a rush. And they're not. Have one website, don't have multiple. Uh, it, I'll come back to that uh, again a little bit, but um, try and keep it easy. And the other thing about mobile, which we found when, uh, I'll show you one of the sites we did recently called Cutting Edge Nights. Um, it was the first one we did mobile focused. Um, and we really had a good think about it. And one of the first things we came about is, when you have to be careful what you show and what you render and what you have to send down the wire, uh, it's all about the content. We get back to basics, which is why I really like mobile. A lot of the fluff gets lost, which is good. So you've got to focus on what's truly important. When somebody shrink that browser window down and everything went on a block, it's just the text. That's where the important stuff comes in. It's not the big image of someone tucking into a nice goose sauce or, or uh, loads of stock photos. They're just fluff. They're nice to have, so they're not central. It's the content that's important. Um, and by focusing on the content at start, and this is assuming you've got a greenfield site, so this is a brand new site, if you focus exactly what's going to be on there and what, you, what message you want to get across to the user, it really makes for a much better website because ultimately that's what your website's for. It's not to look shiny and nice, it's to get across a message. So focus on your message. We found that really, really helpful. Like I say, lose the fluff, and um, that's a really good rule actually. Um, by focusing on mobile, we worked out what was important. And of course, if it's important on mobile, it's just as important on a desktop. Um, and so it was win-win for everyone. Uh, it really helps us focus on our mind. We also did a lot of prototyping in HTML. Um, you can't Photoshop every possible device, so we stopped doing it. Instead, we were built in HTML, and we moved the browser around to get a feel for how it's going to look. Um, and as a result, our HTML <coughs> prototype just went through the roof. We were so much quicker. We were turning stuff around in an hour. We would have an idea to try stuff, and within an hour, we'd know whether it was going to work or not, and whether we could bin it. Uh, yes? Um, I don't know if people know, but in the new Dreamweaver 5.5, it's got multi window previewing and all this media stuff is built in. Perhaps I didn't so know. So you that. can actually view all three sizes at once that you build it 
into your media query. So you can actually make a design change that changes all the windows. Fabulous. Thank you, Mr. Adobe. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, that, that's a cracking tip. Um, so, yeah, if you're doing the, the PSD chop up services and things, I think their, their data either numbers or they're going to have to get very good at chopping them up so they render well on, on mobile as well. That might be a good thing. I don't know. But uh, finally, uh, when we focus on the content, the other side effect for me, because I do the back end stuff, is I find it much easier to do the doc types. Because rather than guessing, you know, you've got a good gut feeling. When you look at the site, you go, yeah, we'll need the box there, we'll need the checkbox there, that's fine. And then when you actually build it, you go, shit, where the hell are we going to get that from? I haven't thought of that. And uh, by actually thinking about the content where everything was going to go, uh, we actually got to, to really work out the doc type and really exercise it and get that back end really well built before uh, James was even let, let loose to, to, to make some of the websites pretty. So uh, we ended up with some really nice data types and selection stuff was really sorted out. Um, I mean, for the knife side, for instance, initially on the whiteboard, when we were whiteboarding what we were going to have, uh, a knife can be either left or right-handed or both. Uh, so to fill space, when we you know, draw a big knife and then we, some bullet points will be here and then I drew a big hand, I was like, look, that was left or right-handed, isn't that great? All I was doing was taking up space, I wasn't actually getting across the, the, the actual content. And we got rid of that and just came up with left-handed or right-handed because it, 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 it's, the information was important because on the mobile, this very big image that I envisaged uh, just wouldn't work, so we didn't do it. Back to doctypes. Uh, that's actually how doctype mixes kicked in. That's, that's where the idea came. I was doing enough of this content shenanigans that I thought, I'm getting tired of cutting and pasting fields that I've put in the wrong place. <laughs> It belongs on that, that doc type, it doesn't belong there. So uh, I ranted to Matt via MSN and said, wouldn't it be great if there's a way we could make uh, like a mixing? I, I do a lot of Ruby, so uh, uh, I, I, like, I like the idea of mixings in Rubies. If you're a doc net area, you might know them as uh, partial classes or something along those lines. Um, and he came around the next night and we blasted it out of a piece of beer. Uh, it's it one of the quickest packages that we've ever knocked out, and it's one of the most useful. I really like it. So uh, that's by doing this content-led stuff, that's how doc type mixes kicked out. Um, okay, time for another demo. So, enough ranting about media quiz and things. Let's see something in action. Uh, um, so this is uh, this is cutting edge knives. This is this is the site that we built um, this summer. Uh, we had a run of very bad clients who were being very demanding about what we could and couldn't do, and we were doing that terrible thing. You know where they put constraint on you that doesn't need to be there, that actually makes the website worse. Uh, we had about three do that, and uh, we decided we needed a break. So uh, <coughs> we had a little bit of buffer of time in the bank, so we thought, well, let's, let's, let's build the site we really want to do. Uh, we found kitchen knives, and we thought we'd run with it. So uh, we, we, we built this site as a result. It does some nice stuff, and it's got lots of nice kitchen knives on. There's a lot of content, um, and if we drill in, and actually go out and put a knife. Again, uh, back to design for different devices. Um, the original version of this had the knife vertical because we are designers and we've got massive great big monitors and everything looks lovely uh, on 24 inch or whatever we've got. Uh, and then I went home to show my wife and I went, come, come, on, come have a look at what we've done. It's, it's great. And she's got a tiny little notebook in the world. Uh, she's got like a letterbox <laughs> for, a, for a screen. Uh, and so she, she only see the tip of the knife. She went, that's a bit rubbish. I, mean, I, just, I totally agree, it's completely rubbish. So we tip the knives to, to fit on a notebook. Book. So that fits just for my wife, just to keep it happy. Uh, but um, it was an important lesson about this device stuff. You, you, see, you can easily get sidelined into thinking this is how everyone is, and they're not. You, you've got to try it with different devices. Um, which comes back to James's point, which has been asking me to bang into people, is it isn't about just resizing your browser. You've got to try this stuff on some other devices uh, just to see how it works. You catch some real peculiar quirks. We'll tell you about some of them so you don't have to do them. Um, but the, there are some nasties there that you've got to catch. Um, so the whole site was built and it looks fine on the desktop and everything's all, all nice and it does what it does. And uh, feel free to go look and buy knives off because that's fun. And um, it, was, it, was, it was built very well. So it, our first um, real good stab at HTML5 as well. But then there came time came where uh, I wanted to check it on my phone and I was sat on my settee. And I, Went and had a look, and uh, it just didn't look great. It looked shocking. I couldn't, I couldn't zoom. I couldn't do the things because, because uh, on the home page we got the slider. Uh, I couldn't, I couldn't slide anything because everything was all fixed widths and everything. So, oh, how are we going to do this? So I, I told, told James, and um, I told him in the morning, made him a cup of tea and left him to it. And then before lunch, he said, "Done. Have another go." 
And so in two hours, he managed to make our website mobile. And that's, that's quite impressive uh, to me. Uh, I'm hoping it's impressive to you guys as well. Uh, and he'd done that, he tells me, purely because the markup was, was, was good enough to begin with. He'd used all the HTML5 stuff, which made stuff nice and easy. You had nice sections, you had nice blocks, everything was broken down nicely. Uh, hopefully explains why I did the quick spiel on HTML5 at the start. It just helps you write better markup. Um, and then by this some media queries and things, he's managed to make it nice. So I'll do the annoying thing that he tells me not to do, uh, just by shrinking it down. So full size, and we go down. You've only got one step on this, right? Yeah, there's just one. There's just the one. So uh, everything jumps down. So silly things. Uh, navigation stacks up because you don't want to scroll left and right. So everything just goes vertical. Uh, you can see all the knives now. They're stacked down. We've lost the slider. That's gone. So all, all that, all that, um, all that code just disabled. And then everything gets nicely stacked up. And the further down you go, you can see how everything is going now. If we continue to go, those knives should start. Disappearing. Or I might need to refresh. I love live demos, they're fabulous. Uh, well, that's sort of about right. There you go. So everything stacked up. Now that's not bad for two hours' work, if you don't mind I'm not saying it's bang on, but it's uh, it's pretty good. And if we go look at the product page as well, everything stacked up. And that's actually uh, there you go. You still get your knives, you still get uh, all the other goodness. It's not brilliant in the sense that, you know, we're not going to win any awards for our mobile implementation, but we have taken the site that before you have to do the pinch zoom thing uh, and got it to work with literally uh, maybe 50 lines of CSS, if that, um, and, and a few little quotes, uh, tweaks on the, on the marker. And we managed to get that to work. And that was our first stab uh, at trying to get this stuff to work. <coughs> One of, our, one of our gripes with mobile is uh, a lot of the guys who are doing it, clever lads though they are, they're doing it on design portfolio sites and they're doing it on blog sites. Um, they're not, I don't know about you, but my clients don't want me to do design portfolio sites or blog sites. They want me to do fully working websites that sell things and uh, are actually working. Um, and as a result, some of the techniques just don't quite go over too well. So uh, actually, Trying to build one that actually, you know, use some of this stuff in anger was interesting. Uh, our biggest client is a travel company called Olympic Holidays. Uh, we do uh, a raft of work with them, and we're currently in this way of redoing their entire website to make it mobile friendly. Uh, should be if we finish in time. Uh, the first uh, travel site that's, that's built in this way. This way of building, by the way, is called responsive web design. If anyone's heard that buzzword before. Uh, it allows your website to react to the device that it's being rendered on. That, that's the idea. Um, another issue we found with web mobile stuff is the technology and the techniques are moving so fast that the vocabulary hasn't yet been allowed to catch up. <coughs> so some of the techniques we don't really have words for, or, or very bizarre woolly words that uh, makes it very difficult for people to get a grasp of what you're actually doing. So everything's got the word responsive bolted on the front of it, which gets a bit annoying after a while, or adaptive. Uh, it's just the website. That's, that's the way we like to look at it. Just make it a bit easier. All you're doing is rendering the content. So this is uh, one of one of the. This is the homepage. Uh, hopefully, I'll give that a refresh. Uh, so that's because my window's got small. Uh, this is the homepage. I can't show you the full desktop version of it. But if we shrink down, there we go. There we go. So again, we've got navigation on the top. We've got a big slideshow. And uh, there should be a big search form here, but uh, because of the size of my, the display, it's not going to let me render it. And then we've got some boxes to render. This is, by the way, a massive work in progress, uh, but I just wanted to show you what's going on. So again, uh, if we shrink the browser down and tweak off some media queries, you can see the navigation's tweaked, and now we've got a drop down. Uh, it's not ideal, but it will work on, a, a, on an iPhone, and uh, several of the gurus or, or, or rock stars have said that's a perfectly acceptable way of doing it. Also notice now as we've got smaller, the logo shrinks down, and then the stuff starts stacking up until you get down to really crazy, crazy bits. Uh, that image there, that's all shrunk in the browser. And I'll come on to that a little bit uh, in a minute. Uh, but we're making the browser work to render this as best we can. And everything's stacked up, that epic footer that we won't let it shrink. <laughs> all those links apparently are very important. Uh, they're all stacked up on every single page. Uh, down the bottom. Uh, now, I can actually jump to another one, so let's do a uh, hotel page. So, 
Again, big hotel page. Again, this is not a blog. This is not a design portfolio. This is actually a, a product page. It's going to tell you about prices, where you can go. Hotels you can go see. I wish this would render better on full screen. It's really, really mint. Um, and then we've got where you can go and all the rest. So look at all this content. This is one of the busiest hotels that we have. And I picked on purpose so that we can actually show you, my God, how much information is important uh, when selling on the And so let's go look at it roughly on iPhone. It's all stacked up. Once again, all dance media queries uh, are blasting away. And that navigation, again, is at the top. I really like that view. That view's really nice. I think we stacked up an awful lot of information. It does look kind of still damn usable. Johnny Setti, or your wife's Johnny Setti, she's trying to find out where the hell you're going this summer. That's, that's pretty usable for, for, for a hotel website. When you compare it to what we currently have, where again, you have to do a pinch, and then if you want to zoom in, you have to zoom into the corner and, and slide it over to the other side. I'm trying to read left and right, uh, not ideal. So this way, everything, the font's the same size. It's nice and big and readable. Uh, all the spacing's nice. You can't pinch and zoom on these. That's one of the, one of the crutches that catches some people out. One of the things I'm arguing about with James at the minute is on some of these images, I want to zoom in. I want to see this pool. I want to have a look. So we're trying to work out where, how, although we're not letting you make the image any bigger, is there a way you can double tap or tap on that image, open it up in another browser maybe, so I can pinch and zoom to go have a look at these fountains and things and see just, just what, what's going on in those images. More things that we still have to fix, but uh, at least we're getting there. Um, can I show you another one? Can we bother with another, another country one? I'll leave it here. We, you're missing the whole glory of the search option. I oh, know, yeah. so, uh, sorry. It's not going to let me. Uh, and this, when you actually search for a holiday, there's a massive information that comes back when you do an actual search. Flights, availabilities, rooms, all the rest. It's a pig to try and show all that stuff. Massive great big tables. How the hell do you render tables on a mobile? We didn't know, so we thought we'd have a go and see if we could do it. Um, to his credit, uh, and I know he's in the room, so let's be quiet. I think he's done quite a good job of squeezing some of this stuff on here. Uh, again, you want to do a refresh, for example, that's about right. So uh, there's still a stack of information on that page, and it's still sort of stacking up okay. It's not brilliant, but what do you want? Sorry, again. Um, have you looked into using jQuery Mobile? Uh, yes, a little. Because that would solve your table problems really. It's got a full table system that will build all that for you, and you can start to standardize them and it stretches and everything. And they'll tabulate all your content so you don't have it in scroll and you can put it down. Really well looking at it. Noted. Thank you. So we will be looking at that. Uh, some new more sites. <laughs> I owe you a pint if we do. <laughs> um, so that's uh, some of our stuff. And if we look at the code for this sort of stuff, you'll notice it's just full of all sorts of weirdness. Um, Again, a lot of this stuff can put people off mobile as well. Has anyone heard of boilerplate? I had a look at boilerplate. Um, scared the shit out of me. I don't know about you. But anyway, <laughs> we pop that up and you go, what the hell is that doing? And then there's a nice little comment going, this is for a bizarre query that affects only six people uh, using a very old 10-year-old piece of system. And you're going, you really have thought of everything. But uh, by all means, if you haven't looked at it, go look at it. These are great bit of kit. And uh, Paul Irish, again, uh, who, he, who should be sainted as far as I'm concerned, uh, does a very good job of making it very obvious that if you don't like any of it, take it out. He's thrown in everything in the kitchen sink. And it's for you to trim it back to where you want it to get. I agree with that philosophy, but I do find a lot of the message gets lost in the noise uh, by having all those hacks in there. You're not too sure which hacks are quite as safe to bring out as others. Um, and I will come to that. One thing I do want to point out when we've got source open is this little snippet here. I do mention it later on. It's called the viewport meta uh, tag. Uh, it's a new one. And um, all it simply does is say, will you restrict the width of my page, please, to be whatever the device, max width of the device is. That is what disables the pinch solution on uh, iPhone devices. And it's uh, saved our ass a few times. Again, the reason you should test on the devices you're actually going to be rendering this stuff on is we had a really quirky uh, bug where when I was skipping through the Olympic demo, whenever I pressed the back button, it would blip a bit big and then zoom out again and then blip big again. And I, I wouldn't be able to pinch it, I'd be a real pain in the ass. Just adding that one little meta tag there made all that go away, because it just told it, don't allow them to zoom, damn it, just, just make it full width, everything will be fine. Uh, so that overwrote that and took away a lot of the pain. So that's one of the quirks I was telling you about. <coughs> that one's a great one, uh, viewport. Make, make sure you put that in if you are doing any mobile stuff. 
Uh, right, back to the action. He said, action. So, it's not rocket science to do mobile. It really isn't. Uh, there's literally, you can make just about inside mobile with a couple of hours of head scratching and a couple of good cups of tea. Uh, you don't need that much to it. If you've got a great marker, that will really help. Uh, it really makes things much easier to do. If you're dealing with a site that someone says, make it mobile, and it's a dog's dinner, probably walk away from that contract. Uh, might not be worth taking that one. Uh, but if you've got control of the market and it's a good enough site, you can probably have a go at trying to make it mobile. Uh, and you might be able to uh, certainly get some of the way there. Uh, all your images, uh, just have one rule at the top. Images, match width, 100%. And that allows everything to, uh, to, to shrink or grow, uh, to fit into the browser nicely. Doug doesn't like that rule. Because Doug wrote ImageGen, and as far as Doug's concerned, the wonderful phrase he told me is, uh, I wrote ImageGen, so you can send down exactly the sound you need. Yeah. Sorry for that accent. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and basically, uh, you know, we, we've all been taught, don't let the browser resize images. A, does a bad job, and B, you're sending down a bigger image than the browser actually needs, and wasting bandwidth. That's always been the argument. Um, we can't do that anymore due to the, like I said, to, to remain device agnostic, we have to we have to allow for uh, images to go all sorts of different sizes. So what we do is we send down an image that's about the right size, again using those uh, breakpoints that we put in earlier, those three major breakpoints we put in, and then we let the browser size it because we don't know the size of the browser. But by setting it by match width to 100, the browser will handle it and do it as well. Uh, the browsers are awesome uh, resizing images now, a lot better than they used to be. All that pixelated horrible rubbish that we used to get to the uh, top of this. So you say then that you send three different sizes of pictures depending on the three different three. Uh, I will come to that answer as well. Yes, uh, that's it. Responsive images which is coming up. Um, use the viewport meta tag, um, it does help. And uh, another nice tip is if you've got buttons and things, make them bigger. Just put a bit of padding on them. Uh, because it means if you're using a big fat thumb like I've got, I bite my fingernails for like spoons with thumbs. Um, it means you've got a much bigger target area to hit. If that's a call to action, make it easier to hit. It's uh, a really, really nice little tip. And uh, my other big thing is don't have a separate site. Um, when we were going to do the Olympic site, they were really keen on we'll have a separate mobile site. It would be amazing. Full booking engine and everything, all done in a separate mobile site. And it filled me with dread and because uh, we haven't got enough eyeballs to look after two lots of templates. You make a change in one, you forget to make the change in the other. And uh, before you know it, you get out of sync really quick. Uh, and then you get yourself in all sorts of trouble. Not enough people. We'll be working with a website every day. We wouldn't be working with a mobile one every day. And uh, then you get that horrible phone call, you go, I can't book. How long has it been like that? Um, I don't know. I haven't got any fireballs on it. <laughs> so um, that was my nightmare. I didn't want that. So we did. Uh, we, we went through this responsive web design, uh, what's called one web. So it's exactly the same content down the wire. Your device renders it based on rules you send it. So I'm going to have to wrap up now, real quick. Um, so other stuff. I talked earlier about what's good for the desktop, it's also uh, good for mobile, it's also good for the desktop. All the good stuff you should be doing. Compression. Uh, mobiles need it. Remember we talked about you might be on the bus. You're on 3G if you're lucky. Uh, Ryan, really lucky if you're on 3G. Uh, so the, the smaller you can get that stuff, the better. Uh, some of the tools you've got, client dependencies built in Umbraco. So tip to the Umbraco boys. Uh, I don't like it. Uh, it's a bit too .NET y. Uh, where we work is lovely. James looks after all the design, I look after the .NET stuff. It's a lovely separation. Uh, but I still need some of the stuff to be usable by my designer, so he can add stuff without having bothering me all the time. Client dependency I find is just a bit too um, a bit too .NET heavy. Uh, you've still got to know what you're doing before you can start using it. As a result, we wrote a lightweight version uh, or a lightweight compressor that uses uh, UV. Again, another thing you don't say out loud very often, but uses the UV compressors. Um, very similar to ImageGen, you just pass through on the query string the images the files you want to put in. It compresses everything, caches it, allows you to put version numbers on it so you can change your JavaScript file or anything. It will uh, inject in. Yes, sir? Is that like squish it? Uh, similar, but it does it, it does it on the fly. So it's um, when your application first boots up, there's nothing. Uh, and then the first request that goes in, it compresses it. I say it uses the Yahoo compressors. Yeah. They are ridiculously <coughs> fast and very, very good. Um, and then we cache that, and again, all, all for blazing speed. Uh, you can pass through as many files as you like on the query string, it'll stack them all up return with one file, so it does concatenation as well. Um, it was ridiculously quick to write. Steve, who's our coding machine back at, uh, at home, uh, he knocked it up in about an afternoon um, with about an A4 sheet of crib notes on me about 
what it needs to do. We are going to release it. Uh, it's going to release in the packing. Uh, very lightweight, very designer friendly, does a lot of goodness. Uh, apparently .NET 4 and IS 7, Mr. B, you might be able to confirm this. Uh, we'll be doing uh, compression out of the box. Uh, you can put a flag in, it'll do it. Uh, and also, uh, as an additional stuff, uh, we found with uh, Cut Nation Knives on the homepage, we download every knife we do. Uh, and as a result, it's a pretty, pretty heavy page. Uh, we've managed to get a score on why it's slow uh, for that, I think it's about 96, which for a, a homepage is rocking in at 1.5 meg, that's, that's pretty damn good. Uh, and the way we did that is we just compressed the tits out of everything. Uh, so the images are, uh, they run through image gen, but because of PNGs, because we need the transparency, we're real quick, because I'm aware I have to. Uh, we, uh, I believe in .NET there's a trouble with, with compressing PNGs where they get a little bit bigger. And uh, Google was complaining, saying those images could be a touch smaller. And we were losing about two, three K per image for each of those nine images. So we set a job up that would uh, have a file watcher that would watch all our media folders. And any time a PNG file is saved, uh, PNG crush kicks in and goes, which <laughs> saves another 3K. So every time we update those images, <laughs> another 3K saved. And that's, uh, in, in the end, take about, I think about 80K on the home page size. Now, that starts stacking up those little bits. Uh, and again, they, they all help. Uh, so, uh, back to your uh, question earlier, what the hell is in response to the images? Um, originally, we sent down, we used image to set size, the image that we're going to send on the wire, and uh, as you've seen on some of the stuff when we resize it, it is at the browser is actually squishing down that initial, initial image. Uh, what we wanted to do is if you request it off an iPhone, because remember, no one ever sees those intermediary ones. When you when you go look at it on your iPad, your iPhone, that's all you see. That one you get, that's that's the size you see. You don't see the growing and the shrinking stuff. You just see the size. So what we wanted to do was send down the right size for the right <laughs> right device. And one of the ways we did that is uh, there's a lovely, there is a bit of kit for the uh, Unix world called Responsive Images, which I think is PHP. Um, and I want to use a .NET version, non existent So again, I wrote one, why not? Uh, it uses uh, Doug's wonderful image jet, and all it simply does is right at the top of the HTML, we set a cookie that says, what is the maximum size for this device? That's the, that's the actual monitor size. Uh, sets that cookie, and that's right at the top for a reason, because anything that follows it, uh, if you know about headers uh, in HTTP, those headers will get sent. And every cookie will get sent along with that, with that header request. So every time we request an image, the cookies get sent with it. And one of the cookies that gets sent is the maximum screen size. So what we set up was a little uh, URL rewriter, uh, an HTTP handler or module, I don't remember. Uh, anyway, something that catches image requests. And it goes, do we have a header? Yes. <laughs> What's the image size? It does it fall within one of our three breakpoints. And if it does, we send down uh, the shrunken version to fit into that breakpoint. Uh, and that all uses that amount of bit of kit over there, uh, which works out the box, and this will hurt him, but I'll say it, it works with the free version of the box. Uh, we did have the pro version while we tested, and we thought we were gonna need licenses, uh, but the free version will work uh, with that uh, perfectly fine. Uh, it works really good, and annoyingly, the only way to test it is to hit it with your iPhone, and then go look at the file system and see if image gen is written down the right size. Uh, and it does, it's done it our entire knife site and now has everything mobile size and uh, iPad size. It works a treat. I find you well. Uh, the big I like about it, uh, Anthony, you wrote a, a lovely a lovely blog post recently about using sensor and Dan uh, for doing something similar. You have to mess with the URL uh, doing that. This way, you don't have to do anything. Uh, my designer, he doesn't have to give a rat's ass what. <laughs> what, what about any of that stuff? You just, I want this image that I've just now created, I put that there. If it's a PNG, our stuff catches it. And uh, not PNG, if, uh, if it's an image, our stuff will catch it, check for the cookie, shrink it down to the size needed, and blast it back down, down the wire. No markup changes required. You just install and forget. It's designer friendly. Again, it's the new package, it's coming soon. There's a lot of coming soon, so I probably should explain to those now. I've just had a baby on Saturday. Uh, so I was going to have all this stuff wrapped up. Uh, <laughs> my wife's had the baby, actually. Uh, uh, I was going to have all this wrapped up, and we were like, and I'm releasing that today. But uh, instead, I've just been up, not sleeping. Uh, so uh, <laughs> forgive me for lots of coming soon, honest kind of, kind of comments. Uh, okay, wrapping up real quick. Uh, some advice and tips. Uh, please, 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 don't fixate on just dragging and dropping your, your, your browser around. Try it on some, some actual devices. Uh, I'll do that later. Um, 
don't waste time on transitional effects. They're for tosser designers on the design portfolio. <laughs> you know the ones where you shrink it down and stuff starts animating. Wow, look at the animation effect he's done there that no one will ever see. So do not bother doing it, please. Um, just wasting bandwidth for the actual user. We strongly, strongly recommend uh, uh, Malarkey's 320 and up framework. Uh, the gist is you should design for the iPhone first. Sorry, other smartphones are available. Uh, you design for that first, and then if you get the content right, the layout right, the markup right, it will scale up beautifully uh, onto the desktop and everything else. Uh, James has done this now for two sites. Absolute convo. I cannot shut him up about it. I try, he just keeps going. Um, it must be good as a result. Um, don't use too many vendor prefixes. Have a play by all means. Some of that stuff is actually kind of fun. But don't go really silly for all the, all the different stuff. It's just below. Uh, don't worry about it. Boilerplate, like I said, wealth of knowledge, but go easy on it. Um, it's great for dipping in and, and having a good look around, as is uh, treated like any framework. If you ever look around Mutil's source code or jQuery source code, uh, wonderful stuff to be learned, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to rewrite it or, or use it all. Uh, we've done a stripped down version uh, called our simple site starter kit, which is uh, a bit of the boilerplate goodness and some of the other stuff that we learned along the way. Uh, that's been around for about six months and we keep updating it. Uh, it's available off our website and again there is a resource slide coming up so you can grab that later. Uh, that's the one we start all our websites with, uh, so more than one. It's not purely for Umbraco, it's for anything. Uh, we've been happily installed on Umbraco stuff as well. If you are working on something and you're not sure what's going on or you want to get it tested, tweet it. There's a mass of people out there. If you say, I'm doing this site, can someone have a look at it on their phone? Can someone give me some feedback about what it looked like on the tablet, what's it look like on their thing? I tweet it out and someone will have a spare five minutes to grab a, a quick look and get back to you. Just getting that, that feedback is fabulous. Uh, Twitter is amazing for that. If anyone isn't on Twitter, what are you playing at? It's amazing. Get on it. It's fabulous. Um, and if you are on Twitter, uh, another good thing, we're very, we can be very insular, but we all work with Umbraco, we all talk about Umbraco. My brother follows me and he says, will you shut up about this cult that you're in called Umbraco? Uh, I just can't, can't help it. Uh, but I, I also try and uh, reach out to others as well. Follow some good front-end developers, some really clever lads out there. Just like we're working really hard with the back-end stuff, there's some guys out there who just work on the front-end stuff and they do a really good job at it. Some of the tips they can tell you are fabulous. Uh, so do something different and follow some front-end new guys. Uh, some really good ones. I will not recommend any. I would say though, don't follow just the rock stars. Uh, some of the young up and coming lads, they're, they're the ones who are really, they're doing the late night shifts, they're the ones who haven't got girlfriends yet, uh, or mortgages, <laughs> and they're just locked in until six in the morning uh, drinking Red Bull and just writing amazing stuff. So you can go to really cool stuff with them. And finally, just explore, play and have fun. This stuff isn't scary. Please don't think mobile is black art, it's not. I hope I've shown you this. It's really just a couple of hours work and uh, you know, a couple of lunch times you can catch up really quick on what this stuff is. It is moving fast though, so get on board, learn some of these tips and, uh, and just have some fun with it. Just see what you can do. Your next project, make it mobile. Just see what you can do with it. A couple of media queries really is all you need. Uh, that's my resource slide. If you want to take a snapshot or you can go on our website you can also find it on there. I put a QR code on, I have no idea if it will work. But that would be cool if someone wants to have a go. Um, there's one more slide after that which I've put on in a minute. That's me done. Has anyone got any questions? Wow. I'm really coming at you. I'm quite happy with that. Yes, sir. Can I ask a little bit more about your design process? Now you sort of go into responsive design. At what point do you think about Photoshop? And um, we tend, like I say, we tend not to do the Photoshop thing at all. Uh, we, we ask them what they want and we'll, we'll do them on the whiteboard is our best friend. We do uh, so much stuff on the whiteboard. You can just erase and, and change it so quickly. When we lay stuff out roughly where it's going to be, the client insists on screenshot. You can give them a rough, but don't go any further than that. Build it. Build it in HTML. Take some snapshots and, and let them play with it because that's the best way they can actually get a feel for what it is this site's going to look like. Uh, remember the old adage that for the client, the UI is the application. They don't stand. They never hear all the back end stuff. Uh, Benjamin's in the room, he was talking to me last night about how this amazing massive back end code and <laughs> is it going to be finished? It's obviously there, isn't it? But they were desperate for a good, that's all they were allowed to see. So it's the same sort of thing. Uh, give them what they want. They want to, they want to see what it's going to look like because they haven't got the imagination. We work with this stuff all day, every day. When someone tells you, I want a caravan website, it's got to be blue. I want to picture this woman on there. We can picture that in our head, no problem. You know, roughly where everything's going to be. They can't. Uh, so you've got to show them. So, uh, hey, prototyping, hey, show them. Adam, are you giving me the flag to say hurry up, or you have got a question? 
Last chance, one more question, are we done? And we're done. Uh, front end stuff Tim, back end stuff me, uh, all our gloves are on off road. Thank you very much.